and right now we're going to start working on the sock because this takes longer. So now we have, there's some meat along the edges here as you can see, um, but we've already got more than enough for, for the ravioli that we need. Now we got to twist this apart and we're going to make the stock, we got to break these up with take a thick big knife. The more you break this up, the better flavored the stock will be. Get a power through it. And break it up into three or four pieces and then we're going to brown this. Not too hard to do really. Okay, okay pans, uh, we got a lot of heat. It's on number eight out of one to ten uh, on a powerful burner. And it's been heating for three or four minutes. I'm putting the olive oil in now, followed by this is how much we get a lot of rabbit bones and scraps off of it. If you cook rabbit in a traditional way, this often ends up going in the trash. It's really, really sad because this is where a lot of the flavor is. So, usual routine, we're going we're gonna to brown this. I'll come back in there. Studded onions, peaks, the um, celery, carrot, and you could make a bouquet garni up with this, but since it's going to be strained at the end anyway, it's, it's kind of a waste of time. This is a parsley, anise seed, mustard seed, white peppercorns, and a clove of garlic. It's all going to go in there. Um, yeah, in classic French, you would absolutely make a bouquet garni. I don't see any point at all because this is all going to be it's going to be cooked for a really long time for low heat. So we get the stock up to this point, and now I'm reducing the heat way down to two. But there's no really obvious nasty scum in this. This is a little bit around the edge, but accumulates enough here to make sense, and we'll skim some off. But there's there's not a lot of scum here. It's on a back burner, and it's uh, at 60. I'm going to increase it a little bit, so it'll be between 60 and 60, 70 degrees Celsius. This is what you want to see ideally. You see steam slowly leaving the surface. No bubbles, no extremes. This is reducing. The steam is the water leaving, but there's not a massive amount of flavor leaving because the steam escape is pretty slow and the temperature is about 60 Celsius. And this is this rabbit, almost a demi-glass now. <coughs> I've kept this between 60 and 70 degrees for uh, about nine hours now. Almost no steam has come off of it. Very thick, concentrated, delicious. It's not washed down, it, watered down. It's not um, tasting oxidized at all because the temperature was never hot enough. And I'm going to move it into a little container. <laughs> very, very little left. This is going to be beautiful thick gel after it cools in the refrigerator overnight. And we're going to use this to make uh, the sauce. Now we're going to make the ice water for this. I've got the uh, ice and, not surprisingly, water and a little piece of lemon in here. And like we're making a cocktail. We want it to be acidified. That's what the lemon's for. Now the water is ice. Okay, into the Cuisinart bowl, I've got 180 grams of flour, just regular all-purpose flour. I've got 50 grams of butter, 
and I've got 20 grams of rendered pork fat. This has all been frozen in, in the freezer for a couple of hours. We want it to be very, very cold. Some people go so far as to put the work bowl from the food processor into the freezer too. Uh, you know, I think this is a little excessive. We don't need to go quite that crazy. Now we're just going to pulse this a little bit to get it into, uh, you know, coarse stage. We still get some pretty big lumps in there. That's a good thing. Just fine. Not a problem. Now we're going to measure out the water from the uh, cocktail shaker there that you saw a minute ago. I'm going to add this a little bit of this one. key here is that you do not want to over mix it. You check it. Okay, it, it's holding together. That's good. That's as far as we're going to go with it. Now we're going to take this out, knead it just a tiny, tiny bit, get it to, to bring it together, and then wrap it up in plastic. Just turn this out onto the board, and I'm showing you the, the whole process. And you can see this is a very dry and crumbly dough. There's very, <laughs> very little moisture in it. That's a good thing. That's what you want. Because if you make this wet and sticky, it'll be hard later. It won't be flaky. And it's one of the big mistakes. People make they add too much moisture to this. And uh, and then the, the dough is not flaky. It's like hard as a rock when you're done. So, you know, wrap this up in plastic and refrigerate it for about half an hour. Okay, got a floured surface here. This is after about half an hour of uh, the dough resting. Also, I've got some slices of butter here that uh, I just sliced off and I put them in the freezer for about the last 15-20 minutes. So, you can see, when you look at this dough, you can see the big pieces of butter um, in there. That's exactly what you want. If you don't see that, <laughs> that means you ran the food processor too much. And now you're in trouble. <laughs> you uh, definitely want to see those those chunks of butter in there. We're not going to try to roll this out too fine here. And we've got to also keep in mind that we have to work fairly quickly because we cannot. Our heat is our enemy, and this room is a lot hotter than the freezer where this dough is going to go. We start letting this butter melt. Big, big problem will not be flaky. Okay. Okay. Got this is some of the um, frozen butter. Semi frozen butter. Put it in here. It's not a exact science. It's it's approximate. Do this. Flatten it down. We're going to create a couple layers here. That's fine. Key here, more important than anything else, is to move reasonably quickly. Not, don't try to make it perfect right away. You'll have other opportunities to neaten it up and square it off. Okay, this is enough. Don't want to work it anymore. We're going to have. A goopy mess if you're not careful. Wrap it up again in plastic. I'm going to need more plastic. Put it in the freezer now. The freezer for about 15 or 20 minutes.
showing on this side. So we'll go to this side. It doesn't have as much showing. Last of the butter. Last of the frozen butter. Back to the freezer again. Okay, it's been another 15 minutes or so. And we have to do it again. The idea of this, of course, is that you're, you're building up layers. Now we're not adding any more butter, though, so now it's just a matter of uh, rolling. Of course, it's a little bit stiff because it's been in the freezer. That's the idea, it keeps the butter solid. Not really that much work, you know. The first couple times you do it probably seems like a lot. And we're going to fold it over like this on itself. And as we do this, we're also neatening it up so it'll be a, a better shape, more rectangular. Use your hand a little bit on it to flatten it out. Try to do too much before you go back to the freezer, though. And you can kind of shape it like this. I'm rolling unevenly here in order to, to stretch out the dough into a better rectangle. I've got the, the, the dough rolling pin is tilted at an angle here to try to make the parts that aren't stretched out stretched out more. Okay, this is good. I just did one one turn here. That's all I'm going to do. Now I'm going to wrap this back up. It's going to go back in the freezer again. And it's back out of the freezer again. <laughs> you got to kind of feel it and see. You think it's going to break. It's too brittle because of being frozen. If so, you can warm it up a little bit. I'll just go over it a few times with a rolling pin. Okay, having completed this fold, now I'm not going to put it into the freezer this last time. This last time it's going to go into the refrigerator for a good uh, 20 or 30 minutes because we want it. Got a bay leaf, um, about 10 juniper berries, a few white peppercorns, a little carrot, and an ounce, of about 30 grams of shallot. I'm going to mince up the carrots, the shallot. I'm going to crush the, the berries and the um, white peppercorns while I uh, begin heating the wine. Okay, we've got a pan on a medium heat. I'm going to add about 120 milliliters of a good white wine to this. This is why French food in restaurants is expensive. <laughs> it's the wine that adds up a lot quickly. This is the uh, minced shallot and carrot just showed you a minute ago. There's the crushed juniper berries and white peppercorns. And uh, I'm going to begin <coughs> heating this. Bring it to uh, simmer. We're going to start reducing this. Um, we want to get it up to a slow simmer. We don't want to just boil it off. It's important. You want to reduce this, but you're going to do it slowly because you want to get all the flavor you can out of this. Keeping it between 70 and 80 degrees. Now, I've reduced the heat as it gets close to the bottom here. You can see that it's almost completely dry. This is this is the stage that you want. Okay, now we have this um, same glacé de la pine. I'm going to add a tablespoon or so of that. And I've got 120 milliliters of cream. I'm going to add that. And I'm going to uh, increase the heat just a little bit now in order to, to melt this uh, gloss or glace in English, gloss in French, and um, and then we're going to pass it through a sieve. But basically, just want to heat this enough to melt uh, to melt this stock reduction. Okay, it's 
steaming here. And we're going to pass it through the sieve. Rub it through as best you can. Try to get as much through as you can with the back of a uh, spatula. And this is our finished sauce. I'm going to finish it with just a little bit, a little splash of gin in a teaspoon. I don't have to add that, but it helps boost the juniper and uh, helps boost the juniper and herbal flavors. Uh, now this is ready. It's, it's not thick enough yet, but it will be after we've. Okay, having taken off the legs, now we've got um, to look at the rest of it. Usually the rabbits come with a couple of kidneys. These obviously come off pretty easy. You can just save these. We'll, we use these for a little something later. If you don't want to eat the organ meat, you don't have to. These come out easy. You can take some of the fat with them if you want. And you can trim, trim them up later when you're actually ready to use them. Just keep a little box off the side here for the parts. Um, now we need to get to where these tenderloins are in the strip. We also got a big piece, this this um, flesh that runs along here. This is really tough. If you try to eat this or just cook it up, it, it's not going to be good. So what we need to do is take this off. We're going to grind this, and this is going to become the meat that goes in uh, the ravioli. So this gets taken off. You can use a food processor to, to, to blitz this. The problem is is that the food processor won't really make it fine enough and you'll still have little tiny stringy bits because this is such a tough piece of meat. Uh, it's actually better to run this through a meat grinder first but if you don't have a meat grinder you just have to make do. And because we're dealing with such a small quantity, I've got some uh, day-old bread that I cut up that I'm going to put into the, the <laughs> grinder right after this to help push through the rest of the meat. Okay, and when you can see that it's it's uh, bread coming out in, instead of meat, and if you can tell the difference here, it's uh, you can see the, the bread crumbs mixed into it. Now you know you're done. Don't want to run the whole bread through. It's just enough just to get uh, some of the last the bits of the meat through. Okay, now I'm gonna put the rabbit meat, the ground rabbit meat, in here, along with about a tablespoon of bread crumbs, level tablespoon. the white of one egg and just a tiny bit of cream and maybe and maybe another tablespoon about a tablespoon of cream and now we're going to blitz this up you're going to have to to stop it and uh, scrape the sides a little bit in order to, to make it homogenous you want to make this homogenous I don't want to forget to season it, which I'm going to do with uh, just a little bit of white pepper, ground white pepper, a little bit of nutmeg, and some salt, of course. And blitz it one more time here. Complete the puree. Now, to show you the consistency that we're, we're looking for, see it's a thick paste. 
and what we're going to do is refrigerate this a little bit and it's going to be used in two places. It's going to be used to seal up the middle of that tenderloin that's going to be rolled and it's also going to be used as the filling in the ravioli. Now we have the uh, pasta dough that's been rolled out and if uh, you don't know how to do that well you got to watch my other video because I can't show every step of everything in every video. <laughs> this is the rabbit mousse that uh, we made earlier. You can make different sizes of these of course and uh, you're just going to take a teaspoon of this, put it in the middle fold it over get rid of the air bubbles of course work it a little bit more and then you know crimp it around like this make this little coke hat shapes and uh, this one's a little bit small yeah, you could certainly make a larger one obviously just cut a larger circle do the same thing Okay, we've got a pot of simmering salted water, and it is simmering, not boiling. <coughs> I'm going to put these in for two minutes. And a few minutes later, when you're satisfied that they're completely cooled down inside and out, then move them to a towel first and put a little bit of oil on them and put them in a container store them in the refrigerator till you're ready to actually use them. Okay now we'll say the order comes in and guests are arriving. Here's our um, previously half cooked um, <coughs> tortellini. I'm going to take uh, a few of these put them in the simmering water to finish and in another pan right here we've got this warming up I'm going to add a little extra virgin olive oil always a good thing a couple of cloves of garlic and a couple of sage leaves that have been um, just cut coarsely none of this is going to end up in the final dish the garlic the sage leaves this is just to flavor the oil so they're going to cook this for a few minutes get it sizzling while the ravioli finishes. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> tortellini finishes. It's been a couple of minutes. Ravioli. <laughs> it's been a couple of minutes. Tortellini uh, to temperature. Pot of simmering on. Right here. Now, we have that glass de la pin. Can use a lot of it. This is a precious commodity, but this is this is what we made it for. Going to melt this in the pan and use this to, to finish off this tortellini. And we're going to reduce the gloss even further this way. It's going to be incredibly powerfully flavored. legs which are equally easy it's like this this part is going to end up going in a braise in a few minutes uh, this is all being done uh, the day before the final preparations in a pinch I guess you could get up really early in the morning and, and make it all in one day but it's easier to make it in two days now for this section for the filling for the tarts We've got uh, the rabbit, celery, mushroom, carrot, and fresh thyme in the correct proportions. I'm going to season uh, the rabbit with some coarse salt. 
We've got a pan that's heating up and we're going to start cooking. Okay, pan's heating uh, out of 1 to 10, it's on a 7. I'm going to put a little olive oil in. And when these are browned off, I'm going to add the shallots, the carrots, and the mushrooms that I've diced up into the pan. But I'm reserving the other vegetables for, for only for the braise, and I'm not cutting the, uh, the celery or the garlic are going to remain whole, and those are going to get some good color of the vegetables. Some brown in there. Now I can add the red wine. The heat is off. I'm just going to scrape this to deglaze the bottom of the pan, and then we're going to transfer this to the braising dish. Vegetables, contents of that out. Now I'm going to add the celery. I'm not going to cut this up because I want to be able to remove it later. I got the clove of garlic. I've got uh, the thyme, and then this is going to get. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to add a little coarse black pepper. Now this is going to get sealed up, go in the oven, and we'll begin the braise. <coughs> they were braised for. Uh, two and a half hours at 150 Celsius. Pull this off. Get rid of the celery. The rest of this needs to get transferred to a bowl and uh, and put in the refrigerator until it's uh, completely cooled down. And then we're going to pick the meat off the bones and uh, use that for the filling for the pie. That'll be uh, tomorrow, though. Tomorrow. Pick the celery off, but I'm actually leaving that roasted garlic clove in there. I'm going to pack all this in the container and uh, just store this, let it cool down. And then uh, tomorrow I'll come back to this and, and pick the meat off of these bones. Okay, this is the next day. This is the um, rabbit forelegs that were braised slowly with the red wine. Uh, one of the reasons why I didn't do this the day before is because I want to retain all the flavor and you start breaking it up while it's still warm you get flavor escaping like crazy and then you put it in little pieces in the refrigerator the next day it's going to react reacts it loses more flavor now the tricky part with this you keep all the skin but you have to be really careful with rabbit forelegs because they have little tiny bones in them sometimes and <laughs> not sometimes every rabbit has it but um, you have to you have to pick through it sometimes they get hidden they're, they're a little bit tricky to find so as you're going through it you gotta really watch also little little nuggets like this it's a joint we keep all the the mushrooms and all that and uh, just just pick through the meat but do it very carefully make sure that you you're not missing any bones Then, after you've got all of that removed, you're going to go through it again and carefully pick through it with your fingers and make sure that you have not left any bones at all in it. And you probably will find some. See, there's a little thin bone right there I just found. There's always, always time to go back and pick through this because once you, once you start chopping this up, you'll never find them. And then when somebody's eating it, they get stabbed in the gum with a sharp bone. <laughs> and that's not good for anybody. But I'm going to spend a few minutes making damn sure that you, you didn't leave anything. Then we'll move on to the, the next step. You have to butter and flour the, the tart dishes. <laughs> and I'll just tell you, I, I have a very limited selection of, of dishes for this. These ones that I'm using here are really too small for this. And because <laughs> this is Russia and it's people here don't make this sort of thing it is almost impossible to find the right kind of tart dishes um, for cooking this these are actually brought with me from France the last time I was there so um, forgive me here you know follow the the procedure but don't don't worry about the exact size that I'm using here because these are too small and that's why you're gonna have extra filling and a little bit of extra pastry as well um, if you try to use this exact size, you should use a little bit bigger ones than this. Okay, tap it out. 
now they're floured and uh, buttered and these will release easily now turn our attention back to that pastry yeah, this time the pastry has been in the refrigerator resting not the freezer and uh, it's I think it's been in there for about an hour now so it's a little bit softer but it's not um, it's not squishy the butter is still going to be in good place it'll still be flaky if I try to roll this straight from the freezer it'd be impossible to roll it out it's it's simply too uh, thick and it would start splitting and uh, fracturing as I'm trying to do it now the thickness that you roll this is <coughs> somewhat going to be governed by the um, size of the um, container that you're going to put it in the, the tart pan <laughs> you might go as thick as a quarter of an inch if you have <coughs> a really large tart um, I'm going to go a bit smaller because these tart pans are, are <laughs> not even tart pans, they're really uh, dessert cups is what they are um, they're, they're quite small so you have to use your own judgment and like most things in cooking you might have to do it a couple times before you get it exactly the way you want it to be but as you can see this this dough is, is quite nice for pastry dough it's uh, going to be really buttery and flaky it's not at all hard to work with uh, I'm just going to roll it a little bit more and stretch it to the point where it'll uh, cut out the, the size. Okay, I got it to about uh, something like a sixteenth of an inch. This is a, another tart pan. Uh, I'm going to be wasting quite a bit of quite a bit of the dough here. Uh, you might be able to recycle this into something, but uh, again, it's just the problems when you're working in a place where you have limited availability. Of, of goods. So <laughs> okay, so there's there's the first piece. You can you can see the thickness there. It's it's a little bit over a sixteenth of an inch. It's it's fairly thick. You want this. You want to be able to taste the dough when you're done. And uh, I'm gonna cut another one over here from the. I have my buttered and floured uh, <laughs> dessert cups is what they're. And uh, now you want to place this in center. Push down gently till you get to the bottom. And you want to make sure while you're doing this, you try to get the sides even. Otherwise, when when this thing is finished baking, you're going to have something lopsided that won't look very good. But of course, the uh, you're going to have this little extra flap here in the middle, and you know you can just push it in because this this pastry is fairly soft. And then I'm going to take a fork, or you can use a knife, and puncture some holes here in the bottom and then this is going to go into the freezer for a little while and if you're really a perfectionist you can mess around with the edge here this fluted edge so that it matches up the rest of them but it's uh, it's going to be a bit of a work of art now to match up this edge with with the other ones but it can be done you know if you're if you're you know, very concerned about aesthetics take a knife work it around make it make it look like the other ones and then this goes in the in the freezer, and I'm gonna uh, work on the other one right now. Just to show you quick here, here's the the final version that I got. It's, it looks pretty clean all the way around. When it bakes, you will you'll never know where it was. Now we have to blind bake these first, and uh, because the hole is small, the way to do this is to first make Cut your hand, put the whole, put the foil there first, get it started in the right shape. Make sure that you press it in, down into the corners, and then you fill it with either pie weights or some old beans and rice, whatever, whatever you've got handy. It works. And you press this down a little bit too to help the foil stretch into the right shape. And I'm gonna stick this in here. leg that was cooked with the um, mushrooms mirepoix. Uh, this is why you don't want to do this with a food processor. See what happens? <laughs> That's how you find a bone. You try cutting it, you run into something. Now you gotta pick through that. Ah, there's what I found. There's the there's a little chunk of bone. Boy, this is much smarter to run this with a knife with your final test to make sure that you didn't miss anything. This is real easy to miss stuff, no matter 
how careful you are, you will miss little bones in here quite often. But the knife will not miss anything. So now this is fine. We're going to put this in a bowl. So here's the filling. I'm going to add uh, egg yolk to this. Now we have the uh, glacé lapin, de lapin um, which is the really concentrated rabbit stock we made. I'm going to add a little bit of this. We're going to save most of it to go with the egg melody or ravioli. But I'm going to put a little bit of this in just to bolster the flavor up. And, uh, and then mix this all together. Mix it in. I'm also going to add about a tablespoon of chopped chives to this. And this will be our filling for the pie. Break up. Make sure you break up the, uh, um, the concentrated stock because it's like a gelatin needs to be. And the final touch for this is just a splash of uh, Kodiak. Okay. The timer went off. We've got to remove the blind baking apparatus here. And see it's still a little bit of moisture there in the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this back into the oven um, and let it bake for about one more minute. Okay, now I'm going to spoon the filling in. Uh, <laughs> like I said before, we've got more filling then is going to work in this tiny little tart shape that I've got. You need to use a larger one. Also, you want to avoid standage. Just try not to have the filling land on the pastry itself. And also, if you stuff it up to the top as it cooks, it's going to run over the top of this. It won't be very pretty. So don't go nuts and, and run it to the very last gram leave it a little bit of a margin here okay that's fine now it's going to go back into the oven and here's what it looks like after 16 minutes in the oven now I'm going to let this cool um, <clears throat> fairly well before I take it out of the mold and then we'll show you a little trick here for how it works in a restaurant. okay now we have that tart <clears throat> if, it, if it isn't loose and you can feel if it's loose or not then just run a knife around the edge of it of course this, this is quite loose so, this pastry is light and beautiful. We don't want to refrigerate this. That will ruin it. But we can certainly store these. After it comes out of the oven on the first cook, we can store these at room temperature for several hours. So, these can be made fresh daily or before a big party. You can have a whole bunch of them lined up. And then when the customer actually orders it or it's time for your party, put them on a baking tray, cook them in a 200 degree oven with fan assist on, for just a few minutes to warm them back up again. Uh, plating is of course the, the final touch. <clears throat> I would put uh, probably some chive oil around here. Um, you know, there's lots of lots of possibilities for what you can do. But this is this is going to be beautiful, beautiful pastry. And you actually cut into it. I'm going to show you a second here. Show you what this looks like. Okay. Look at that completely falls apart pastry just the way it should be nice and warm all the way through that last three four minutes in the oven finishes the job Okay, I've got that rabbit saddle, or as some people call it, tenderloin. Yeah, it's not really a tenderloin, it's a, it's a saddle because it's on the outside of the ribs. But anyway, I, I turned one the other way because it's, it's a little bit thicker on one end and thinner on the other. This is the way they, they are on the animal. And so I, I turned one around um, so that you've got an even um, thickness across it. Now I'm going to cover this with a plastic film. We'll begin gently gently pounding this into one homogeneous piece as best we can. Don't try to go too quickly with this, especially at the beginning. It's more important that it's even. Make the, the paillard. You try to turn this into one homogeneous paillard. When you have 
a reasonable rectangle of meat. And you can you can change plastic film in the middle if you need to. Uh, I did on this one because the plastic started breaking up on me. <laughs> Cheap plastic we get here. Anyway, um, now I've got the, the rabbit moose again. I'm going to put right down in the center here. Put, I don't know how much it is. Look at, look at this. It's like a little log down the middle here. Now I'm going to use pastry palette. Smear it down a little bit. You want to really work it into the the weakest point in this pyard, <laughs> which is where the seam is. And you got a little bit too much here. I'll move it over to here. I'm gonna try to make it try to make it even as much as you can. It's, as you squeeze it, it's it's gonna fix the some of the unevenness. As long as it's not too crazy, it'll be fine. Okay, this is fine. Now, of course, begin wrapping it up. You don't have to worry about it being perfect right away because it's it's going to get improved when you squeeze it down. Once you get it started like this, then kind of tuck your fingers in, pull the plastic with one side here, fingers with the other. And if you're making a cigar, you try to make it as even as you can. And the middle's gonna be where you're gonna apply the most pressure because the middle is the, obviously the thickest part for the, the animal. And the ends, when we're done with this, the ends are gonna end up getting discarded anyway, the little tip ends. So if there's a little bit of filling popping out of the end somehow for you, it's, it's not a big deal. It's not gonna make any difference because it's gonna be, when you're done with this, you're gonna cut it off and it's a little snack for the chef. Okay. Okay, now we get this. Now we're going to put the next layer. We're just going to wrap this up in foil. Make it make it the same sort of thing here. Well, now you don't have to worry about it quite as much for it being extremely tight because it's already sealed in the plastic. So mostly the purpose of the foil is to make it waterproof because you're going to be steaming this and obviously you can't have it get soggy. Okay, this is this is a fine piece now. But before we steam this, this needs to go in the refrigerator at least at least for a couple of hours. This needs to, to firm up. Ideally, you do this uh, the day before also and you uh, leave it in the refrigerator overnight. Okay, we're making the coating for this. I've got about 10 grams of uh, dried mushrooms. These are uh, actually dried local mushrooms uh, from collected in the forests. They're not plain uh, button mushrooms. They're nice like porcinis. Uh, half a teaspoon of coarse salt and a quarter of a teaspoon of fennel seeds. And the coarse salt isn't really there so much for the salt as it is for the abrasive factor. We want to grind this into a pretty, pretty small paste, uh, powder rather. And you can see how fine this is. Now what I'm going to do, it's really a powder. I'm going to add a teaspoon, um, about a teaspoon and a half of breadcrumbs to this and give it a quick spin. There we go. And then maybe one more. Okay. Now this is going to be a coating. I just set up an ordinary breading station. Got flour, a beaten egg, and this mushroom mixture, powdered mushroom mixture. Uh, this is the rabbit uh, saddle <laughs> roll that was um, steamed for 20 minutes yesterday, and then it was left in the refrigerator. <clears throat> 
solidified. This is after I pulled the, the wrapping off. There's some clear white, uh, like concentrated stock like kind of material that's oozing out of the ends. Don't let that worry you. It's uh, perfectly tight and good. Now this is ready to be breaded and fried. Okay, for this delicate operation, it's like a hot dog on a stick, right? <laughs> I've uh, carefully put this on a stick in the end that's not going to be used. We're going to make sure that we get a really good coating on this, best as we can. You only got one shot to do this. You don't have another saddle of rabbit, so this is—it's got to go right the first time. Okay. Let me just spin it around. you're getting really good coating on it. You don't have to worry about your fingers getting messed up, nor do you have to worry about fingerprints in the final product, which is more of a problem. I think that looks pretty good. And now the most delicate one. Finagle this around a little bit here. Make sure that it gets coated everywhere. Well, might take you, might make you to get it, but that's okay. There's no time limit here. Is you only got to do this one time for the entire course. Oh, that looks pretty good. That looks very good. Now I'm going to um, take this over to the deep fryer and just kind of flick it off into the fryer with with my thumb. Okay, and I used the, the same skewer to lift it back out of the fryer when it was done. You get a little bit of fall off, but that's okay. Um, this is, uh, oh, remember, the rabbit's fully cooked in there. It was already steamed, so you don't really have to deep fry it in the usual sense. <clears throat> We're just um, cooking this crust, so 30 seconds is enough. And now I'm going to let it cool completely before I start messing with it. Otherwise, well, it's still wet. The, the, the whole thing will start flaking off, so just let it cool for, you know, a, a good three. And after you're sure it's cool enough, use your absolute sharpest razor sharp knife. This will minimize any damage to the, the edge. And you, you want to cut it, it's like little, kind of like slices of truffle. Now the one on the end is, is inevitably screwed up. That's where the skewer was in and all. But after that they should be fine. And just cut them carefully. There you go. Show what the final, final dish looks like. Add just a few drops of black truffle oil across here. Give it a gloss and some more help the mushroom truffle flavor. Now really what I would like to do is shave black truffles over the top of this. That's what you should really do with this. Unfortunately I don't have any right now and they're pretty much impossible to get in the middle of winter in Russia. Get the rear haunches and the front uh, fore, and uh, these come off quite easily off the carcass. Just going to begin by making an incision down here. You know, flex it back a little bit. You see the point that the bone breaks. Just follow this along here. And there's the the uh, first one of the haunches. You can do as many rabbit legs as, at a time as you want, of course, but the important thing is keep them in a single layer. I'm, I'm just doing one right now, as you can see. Um, if you have any bright ideas <laughs> about copying how you make duck confit and uh, salting it and uh, then letting it rest in the refrigerator overnight and draining it, then <laughs> forget it. If you try that with rabbit, you'll end up with something that's kind of like rabbit jerky. It, it'll be incredibly dry, flavorless, terrible, terrible. Don't. I did the experiment for you. Don't repeat it. <laughs> it's not a good thing. You need the moisture. So I put a, a big piece of um, sage 
few cloves of garlic I put this in uh, I'm going to put some foil over the top of this uh, over the top of the parchment and pop it in the oven at 95 degrees Celsius it is being two and a quarter hours now Move this parchment grab it is fully cooked I pulled the sage sprig out of there and uh, I'm going to actually let this cool down in the oil. This is uh, something that really helps the, retain the moisture that it, uh, that it got from this cooking method. Don't just pull it out to a plate. Let it cool down in the oil. And just prior to service, you uh, warm up to finish cooking some asparagus and carrots that were previously steamed. Uh, along with some zucchini, just uh, glaze them with a little bit of butter. Then in the same pan that's still warm from the vegetables over a low heat, you put the rabbit in with, with the lid on it. Um, the rabbit has to begin at room temperature. Make sure you leave it out for at least an hour um, before you actually start cooking it. We're going to warm it up here while we uh, begin doing the plating. Then after you get the, the rabbit, and the vegetables out, you're going to reheat that um, cream sauce in the same pan again on uh, just with the residual heat that's in the pan while you finish arranging the rabbit and vegetables on This is a simple plating that, that anybody could master. You know, obviously you could make it much more elaborate to make it Michelin star dish, but this is Pretty easy to do this. It warms it through and helps clean up any errors in the saucing. And maybe a few micro chives on top. Oh, oops, got one on the plate. Okay, I'll clean that up. Good. Clean up the plate just before it goes out. Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.